Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can play a proper default on Ancient's T-Side. So first of all, in a nutshell, Ancient is all about mid-control. So in order to define how you're gonna control the peripheral areas of the map, namely A main or the B main area, you first of all need to gauge how the CTs are approaching mid-control and whether you stand a chance against it or not. This more or less just means you need to observe how and when the CTs use their utility. So let's say if you're approaching mid from here and at the start of the round there is no smoke here and then the CTs are just throwing one Molotov and uh, let's say one HE for instance, then it's pretty easy for you as a T side to take mid control from them since they clearly don't know what they're doing. On the other side, if they know all the lineups for the instant elbow smokes and there are two Molotovs behind the smoke and in the best case scenario also two HEs, then you're better off just taking mid control at a later stage of the round and not try to force the issue since uh, this usually ends up backfiring, especially in solo queue. For our first example, let's assume the CTs don't know how to properly take mid control, which means you can easily take it from them. And how you wanna be doing this is by sending two players towards elbow and have one player in T-spawn be your support player. And the support player, first of all, what he wants to be doing is to smoke off red room and second of all, you need to throw support flashes. Now, ideally, the support player knows all of the five instant smokes towards red room, but just in case he doesn't, or if the support player is you and you don't know all of the instant lineups, you can also throw a slower smoke like this, where you want to line up yourself in front of this wall here, and then look at the top of the leftmost triangle in this pattern here, and just do a simple jump throw. After you've thrown the smoke, you want to get to this ladder brick here. Look at the top right brick of the V shape here and do a running jump throw like so. And you only need to be wary of, you know, correctly timing your flash. So you just look at the minimap and once your elbow players are in this area, you throw the first support flash and then you just can throw the second support flash. And the good thing is, if you look at the support flash again, um, because you're doing a running jump throw, not just a normal run throw, the flash is gonna pop a bit higher than it would with a usual jump throw. And this means not only are these areas guaranteed to be fully flashed, but also if a player is playing towards donut and holding an angle like this, um, if I re-throw the flash, because it pops so high, he's also guaranteed to be full flashed. Coming back to the two elbow players, as uh, the first player you are expected to be the entry frag and all you need to really care about is first of all always bounce a flash off this wall like so that pops behind you if you swing and then just tank the HE that is out here and trust your support player to smoke off the Molotov so you don't die and then you just need to or you should try to get an entry frag towards here, here or ideally donut so you once you're uh, through the smoke that your support player threw, just take space, continue to take space, but don't overpeak into Donut. Like, if you can see the entrance of Donut, that's a signal to stop, wait for your player. And as the second player, um, as I just mentioned, you are supposed, or you're like intended to be the support player for the first guy. So obviously the CTs don't want to give you mid for free, so you're expected to face a Molotov and HE combo. And if you don't smoke the Molotov, and obviously the HE is uh, gonna be thrown more like so, but it pops in the face of your entry fragger. So if your entry fragger is running through the Molotov and thanks to the HE, he's guaranteed that. So what you wanna be doing, if the city is throwing the Molotov here, you just pull your smoke and once you see the Molotov, smoke the Molotov. And then you just follow your first guy. And if both of you, the first guy and the second guy, reach this area of the map both being alive, you've already made a huge step towards successfully taking mid control. Now, before we continue on the mid area of the map, let's just quickly go back towards T-spawn and talk about the other two players. As I've just shown you, you have two players towards elbow, one support player in T-spawn, and two, as of now, undefined positions. And I'd argue if you want to heavily invest towards taking mid control, you can also send a third player towards elbow, which leaves just one undefined position. And this undefined position is your B player that has the main goal of taking the lane area of the map. 
So basically all he wants to do is just get up towards lane, towards jump up or heaven, whatever you want to call it, as quickly as possible without taking too much damage from the B players. You see, at the start of each and every round, the B players usually throw a util set that goes like so, a Molotov towards lane and then an HE like so that bounces off this brick here and also lands there. So if you go towards lane, you have two options. If you have a good spawn, you can cross the Molotov and HE without taking too much damage, which, which is fine. But if you have a bad spawn, you kind of need to wait the util out. And now you're running the risk of getting peaked from cave if a player is going aggressive towards cave. So if you have a bad spawn, you just toss the Molotov towards cave like so. And then because the player could already be um, in any of these positions here, once the Molotov fades, you can line yourself up in front of these two stones here, um, aim at the frame of the door and to run through to smoke off cave. And once you have smoked off cave, you don't basically don't need to worry about it anymore and you just group back together with your guys in mid. So there is one thing I actually forgot to point out and this is if you have the or like a good spawn towards lane and you manage to get by the util the cities are throwing towards lane here, you can then just continue to swing cave like so and hold it for a little while since again if you have a good spawn and let's assume the CT also has the best spawn for cave then this aim duel is pretty much a 50-50 since by the time you swing the farthest the CT might have gotten into cave is uh, this area here. So yeah if you're feeling confident instead of just smoking off cave you can just go for the aim duel. And again if the CT doesn't have the best spawn then you are approximately meeting or like seeing the CT once you approaches this area which I'd say slightly favors the AK in this case. On the other hand, if you think that two players going towards elbow or towards mid is sufficient, then the second player that was previously also undefined here um, also goes towards the B area and he's just concerned about holding any B ramp push. And holding B ramp pushes isn't really that straightforward as you might think, because as a CT you have basically two options. Uh, option number one, you push down close to the wall, which makes it impossible for any T that is holding an angle like so, seeing you, so you might get an unexpected swing from the CT from down here. Or on the other hand, if you only focus on the lower area, like, I don't know, like so, or like this, then the CT can just, instead of sticking close to the ball, swing out like so, and give you an unexpected peak from the top area of the box. So if you're holding for any ramp pushes, this is best done by lining up the box with the door here and just holding an angle like so which means you can't get peeked from the top area of it or alternatively you can also come in a position like this um, that just eliminates all of the angles towards ramp and just opens up a new angle towards the doors here that just aims to catch any pushing ct off guard but please only hold such a passive angle if you know that no teammate of yours is anywhere on the lane area and might be vulnerable to a B ramp push. And lastly, your support player from T-Spawn. Now obviously, after he has thrown all of his util, the support flashes, the red room smoke, whatever, you obviously don't want to be standing around AFK in spawn, but want to be at least a little bit more productive. And this just means you hold for any A main pushes, so you can like, get in a position like so, and every few seconds jiggle, this angle here. If there is no activity, you can also extend further to the left and jiggle like, jiggle like this. Jiggle back to this angle. You can also go close and hold one unified angle if you will, like this. But yeah, as I said, your main goal is just to make sure that no one is pushing a main and can backstab your mid guys. So now that we have covered all other positions, let's get back to the mid area of the map. Now, how the whole map situation looks is you are guaranteed to have three guys in mid and probably also one guy in front of B and one guy in front of A. Or four guys in mid and one guy in front of A. So, how mid looks in this state is red room, still smoked off, two guys or three guys um, down mid, and one guy up here. Like, it doesn't matter if this is the lane player or the third player from elbow. Or if one player died, still, one player needs to play the lower area in front of this wall and one needs to play 
the upper area. And this is because you can do a nasty double peek towards the donut area. As I mentioned before, at the start of the round, you don't want to overextend towards donut and don't overpeak into donut. But now, if you have one player up here and one player be below you, you can just do a one, two, three swing. So one of you guys just counts three, two, one, and then on zero you swing. So you go three, two, one, swing. And if there's an orb holding this angle, he'll either be confused and completely with his shot or if it takes out one of you you can easily get a refrag and you can continue to double swing this angle into donut here and once this angle is also clear the lower player is supposed to pull the molotov and molotov the area behind donut and then you can simply pick this angle and this molotov as you just saw forces any player playing behind donut to overextend either towards the left or the right area and all that is remaining in donut is then to clear this angle towards your left and maybe also if you're feeling confident this angle and this off angle here like city might be holding from here or as i just said this off angle right here and with all of this you have achieved your first main objective when taking mid control namely clearing out donut and by clearing out donut you're taking a lot of information towards mid from the cities and you're also cutting down on any potential lurk or rotations from the cities towards b side if you then commit towards b side and your second goal should be to either get a player close towards the red room area or into red room and this is because once you get a player into this area or ideally into red room the like all rotations of the cities are completely compromised so let's say you put one player in towards here and the other players well your, your main guy goes towards okay so goes into a main and the remaining three or two mid guys depending on someone died or not is going towards donut and you go out donut towards a with a flash like so then obviously the a players and the mid player will call for help from the b players and if you have a player towards red room you can just hide towards here and once you hear the b players stepping towards seat spawn you can just swing out like so boom easy frag and run back towards donut and regroup with your mates and the funny thing is if you are doing this often enough you are conditioning the cities to be extra careful when rotating so even if you're not going in towards red room and just group up with your guys going donut or going b or whatever when the cities are rotating from a side to b side or from b side to a side they'll still take some extra time most of the time to clear out red room in order to make sure that they're not getting backstabbed However, what about a situation where the cities are just better at taking mid control than you are and you really can't contest them in the early stages of the game? Well, in this case, your default should look like one guy holding a main, one guy holding the elbow smoke for any pushes, and three guys going towards B. And on B, like again, one player is supposed to hold any of the ramp pushes, as I just showed you, like from here, or in this case, probably not from down here and then you have two guys up here in lane that are pretty much doing the same that the one lane guy in your previous default uh, is supposed to namely again i'm quickly show you again i'm molotoving up here and then just smoking cave like so and you should be doing this in sync with your elbow guys because your elbow guy here just basically just waits for the elbow smoke to fade and he can that then get into a position like so and just quickly grab the orb get in a position like so get yourself stuck in this corner here then look at this kind of light green leaf here and then towards the dark green leaves right next to it and do a normal jump throw which is gonna smoke off red room again and from this on out you can then take mid control again from lane where i can just like the players from here can throw support flashes like so um, they, the lane guys need to turn away those since they might get blinded otherwise but this flash again is supposed to flash off the donut player that is playing here and after this flash pops you can just swing the donut area hold this area and then it's just pretty much straightforward you are doing the exact same as before if one guy 
coming from here that is just supposed to, you can, you know, models of Gabi in case you suspect someone hiding in there. And the lane player is just one guy holding this area and another guy dropping down. And then you are doing the same stuff all over again with the double peaks, clearing a donut and whatnot. So yeah, just to quickly summarize, at the start of the round send one player towards A main, send one player towards B main, two players towards elbow, one support player from T spawn and smokes of red room and throw support flashes for your mid guys. If you think you need more firepower towards mid, pull the A main player and also send him elbow. If you're done throwing your support stuff, you are supposed to hold a main. The B player is always supposed to take lane control and then join the mid guys. And in case you are not able to take mid control in the early stages of the game because the CT utility is just better, then you just wait out one or two smoke rotations towards elbow and at the latest once the second smoke fades, you are still gonna smoke off red room. You are gonna put one guy in front of A main, one guy in front of um, elbow and three guys in front of B. Two guys taking lane, one guy holding ramp and then the two lane guys and the elbow guy and if you deem it necessary maybe also the A main guy. Again group in the mid area and take slowly start to take donut and then Red room, and once you have donor control and red room control, you can do whatever you want. You're just likely to win the round, anyways. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you find the video helpful in any way, you can leave a like. If you have further questions, suggestions, feedback, or whatever, you can hit me up in the comments and I will get back to you. And with that said, you can also subscribe to my channel for more educational CS content. So, yeah. I hope you have a good one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!